a bill seeking to amend Nigeria's constitution to legitimize the establishment of state police in the country has passed a second reading in the House of Representatives. The bill, which was sponsored by the Deputy Speaker of the House, Benjamin Kalu, and 14 members of Parliament, is expected to empower state governments to establish their own dedicated police agencies in order to tackle the escalating insecurity crisis in the country. New Central's Idong Joseph monitored proceedings on the floor of the House, and he tells us more. The call for state police seems to have gained attention in recent times, not only among lawmakers, but it seems the executive is also buying into the idea to provide for the establishment of state police leading the debate for the bill which seeks to alter the nation's constitution and make provisions for the establishment of state police in the country lawmakers say the bill will empower states to establish state police so as to be able to tackle the insecurity challenges in their states we have the likes of amoteku we have neighborhood watch we have Ebu Beagu in the southeast. What we're trying to do and what this bill seeks to do is to streamline those activities. The bill comprises of 18 clauses that seeks to alter section 34, 35, 39, 42, 84, 89, and 129, among other sections of the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria. The proposal for the establishment of state police was supported by many lawmakers. As they said, this will help address the current insecurity challenges being witnessed. However, there are some who expressed concern, especially in the ability of state governments to fund the venture in the light of current economic challenges. It gives impetus to the communities. You are, you are so conscious that you have security. What we are talking about now is the legal support may be different from what is happening in Abia, may be different from what is happening in Kano, and the way to control it also will be different. So I believe we are in need of their need. Many states are insolvent, unable to pay their salaries and other obligations. State police is not the right way to go. Can the members of other political parties have justice in a door? The answer is no. So while I'm supporting this bill, I want us to look inward. It will be recalled that the bill calling for the amendment of the constitution to legalize state police in the country has been rejected by previous administrations. While they have been fierce that they will be used by political class to oppress political opponents, lawmakers are saying that with less than 400,000 police officers in the employment of the federal government, providing security for over 200 million citizens is a tall order. In Abuja for New Central, I am Idong Joseph. Now joining us to discuss this bill further is parliamentary analyst Fred Itwa. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Glad to be here. All right. Uh, many Nigerians seem to be very excited about these uh, developments because these are uh, conversations that have been called for for many years. I think from the Seventh Assembly, there had been some pushbacks against it, but now it seems like we're making headway. This is something to be. Is this something that you are also excited about? Uh, well, uh, I'm excited, but uh, I have to uh, kind of delay my excitement Why? until it passes through the rigorous hurdles in the Parliament. This is just the first step. There will be more steps to go through, which is um, the Senate. Uh, then after that, there will be a proper public hearing, community engagement to make contributions, they eventually to pass the third reading. And that's where the problem is, the, the first leg of the problem. Uh, in order to pass any uh, question amendment bill, you have to have uh, 240 members of the House of Reps, then the 74 senators that must be present and voting before the bill can be transmitted to another phase, and that's the most difficult phase. It means 24 state houses of assembly needs to endorse this bill for it to skip through. Now, if it's an agenda pushed by the South, for instance, uh, it will run into trouble, like some people are predicting. I'll try and explain that. Uh, the entire South has 17 states. I need 24 states to get this passed. So if, for instance, um, some northern states are not in support of it, let's just say northeast and northwest, those two areas combined is enough to derail the passage of this bill. Then after that, 
we could probably have a conversation on whether or not the president will sign it into law. And what we also know is that sometimes what is um, proposed is not what is passed uh, eventually. So as much as we want to be excited, we should delay our expectations until these processes are completed. Then we can probably sigh some relief, hoping that we to escape through that we can talk about the modalities and other expectations that will follow. So yeah. it's not sorry, uh, it's not Uhuru yet. So this is not something to be excited about yet because it will take so, a long time. But what we need now is something very immediate to fix the current insecurity crisis. So is it that Nigerians are just going to be stranded at this point and going to wait till forever? Uh, it, it, it will take at least a year for us to get this process done. And uh, the argument too about um, some concerns need to be addressed. One of such is the abuse of power by state governors who would likely rely on the strength of state police to harass their opponents. Uh, some cited the case of a door where you have election coming up. Another state of the federation where already state governments have a way of influencing federal um, security structure to do their bidding. So their fear is, if this is going to work, how do we handle that? And some have argued that one of the requirements or conditions should be the abolishment of immunity clause for state governors and the president. And that whenever they abuse uh, their powers, they can face criminal charges. Whether or not that will come up is a different ballgame. They also have the challenge of funding. Some are worried with state governments unable to pay basic salaries as low as 30,000 naira minimum wage. What's the assurance that if they hire, for instance, about 50,000 policemen, that they'll be able to handle the payments of those um, recruits? The other challenge is, as much as it's still in state police, from what aspect of the bill I've read, uh, to still have some federal interference, not the Police Service Commission, that would uh, kind of interfere in the appointments and confirmation of the commissioners, who in this case would be, of course, recommended by the governors. And some have also argue that some governors may make it a personal affair. And that fear is well founded if you also look at the federal structure of our policy system, where beside uh, probably President Jonathan and uh, Basanjo, every other president we've had since then, they've always appointed people from that part of the country to head the pol federal police. So if these fears are not addressed, I doubt if this whole thing will work. That's, that's just yeah. the fears some presidents are expressing. And uh, the House of Reps, uh, Dito, the Senate, need to address these concerns. Otherwise, House of Assembly will frustrate it, just yeah. like they have done in the past. From what you're saying, you know, I think we probably should just ignore it because it's almost never going to happen. Um, the, the it's loopholes, possible. It's, it's, yeah, it's possible, but, you know, these loopholes are just too many. And, of course, they're very, very sensitive. Um, if you, every yeah. single one that you mentioned is very, very sensitive. And we know how these things play out, you know, with these conversations. Um, one group, you know, just would never, you know, allow this to happen, you know, for the other group. And eventually, you know, we spent, I mean, look at the Electoral Act Amendment Bill and the 977,000 mm -hmm. years it took before it was eventually um, uh, passed. So it, it, that's what it al almost already sounds like. But I, I want you to address, um, you know, what, what needs to change for us to not have the fears of, for example, governors misusing, you know, state police. The fear of the state police now becoming a tool for politicians, you know, to, to use, you know, to, of course, for their own political gains. What, what parts need to change? Do we, do we need some level of improvement with, you know, our systems and then the strength of our institutions for these things to happen? No, well, the, the, the only way that can probably work, first one would be, the power to appoint uh, commissioners, as much as um, they want to leave that with the governor, there should be some form of uh, interference from the police service commission. Just like you have the NGC that would uh, confirm appointments of even state judges recommended by the governor, we can do the same. If there are thorough background checks on the candidate for the position and they feel it is not uh, suitable to host such, then they can decide or decline not to confirm such. And the other aspect which I 
talk about a passing was the issue of immunity clause. Governors are very powerful. It means by law, no matter the crime they commit, if a governor decides to line up 100 persons and kill them, by law, you cannot prosecute that governor unless he's impeached, which means if there's a state police and a governor abuses the privilege, by law, you cannot prosecute that governor. Now, if you address that immunity clause, maybe not entirely abolish it, still uh, protect the governor from civil offenses, but remove that criminal element of it for them to be able to face prosecution whenever they are involved in criminal activities, that will probably allay the fears of people. But, but, but wouldn't the argument, powerful. wouldn't the argument about how that might lead to frivolous court cases and then delay actual governance, wouldn't that be, because that's usually... No, 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 if, 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 if it's civil, I said civil, there will still be um, protected from civil cases. Okay. That's what would derail all of that. But if it's criminal, you have to commit a criminal offence for them to take it to court. And the only way you can do that is to use the instrumentality of state to abuse power. Yeah. So if the or, governor, for instance, is put within check, that can be addressed. But if it's not, rest assured that they will abuse that privilege. It is a work in progress. I'm hoping that as the conversations evolve, evolve that this argument should be well established and addressed. All right, let's talk you know, a little bit more about you know, um, individual states and being able to handle these responsibilities. Uh, they struggled with 30,000 minimum wage, like you mentioned. Um, can they employ 50,000 people? If they don't need 50,000, know, maybe they only need 10,000. Um, I mean, states will be able to decide how many of these placements that they need. But, you know, um, will funding be an issue? You know, and what, what the recruitment process also would be like? Um, is that also some of the things that would be issues with these persons? There's people who have mentioned that uh, civilian JTF, um, Amotekun, um, Ibu Bayagu, uh, Hizba, you know, all, of, all these things are, you know, almost, you know, the same thing with the idea of state police. Um, and so will funding be a problem? And what level of funding, you know, would they even need? It's not just giving them pump action rifles. There's a lot more. I, I don't think funding will be a problem if, um, if that's the main issue. First, a state like Edo, where I'm from, uh, a governor collects almost a billion naira per month under the security guise of vote. security votes. Yeah. Yes. So some states collect over a billion naira, others or every state. So imagine you just add a little to that, it can address some problems. Then another way to fund it, which is already happening, is through police trust fund. Again, if you go to my state, my natural district, for instance, they have um, vigilante groups uh, where you have almost about two or 3,000 of them. And the money that was spent in establishing that was contributed by the people through a trust fund. They raised almost about 300 million naira, which was used in getting vehicles and other um, gadgets for them. And since then, there has been little peace in that area. So if you have a trust fund for the police and the people are sure that it will be well utilized, people will contribute. Even the corporate world will do that. The private sector will do that. Even a civil servant who earns 5,000 naira can decide to pitch just a thousand naira if he's sure that that money will help his secure in his environment. So trust fund will work. Then security vote which governors spend without any accountability. If they just add a little to that, they're able to fund uh, state police. Of course, they will add them into the existing uh, payment structure in their various states. So the burden wouldn't be that much. I was about um, equipment and all of that. From time to time, the federal government will have to intervene like they have done in the case of education, healthcare, through uh, NHI and all of that, um, education through UBEC, TED Fund and the rest of them. So if there are these kind of interventions from the federal government, trust fund to be contributed by the people, and good use of security votes, there will not be a problem at all. An average state will be able to employ at least 50,000 uh, recruits or police officers. Yeah, I mean, you, you would assume so. It, it's, it may also be a way to also mop up a lot of the, um, you know, unemployed young men and women that we see on the streets, yes. which is getting embarrassing yes. at this point, you know, and scary also. But, you know, it, it, the fear that I also have with that is, and we're having this conversation not because there's, I mean, we've already established that the possibility of this happening is pretty slim. But I also have the fear that what you're going to do is now just drag in every Tom, Dick and Harry and put them in the force. Regardless of you know how educated they are, regardless of their mm -hmm. past criminal you know um, life, um, um, you know, criminal history, yeah. everybody just come you know and, and fill up the police force. 
and then it's going to be harder to control because now you have criminals, you have you know, the uneducated, you have everybody now wearing the badge of a Nigerian police officer. And we already know how that turns out. Even for those in the current you know, um, uh, police force you know, who are high-handed and you know, disrespectful of Nigeria's laws and Nigerian citizens. So it's a fear that, or one of the fears that I have. It, 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 in its formative years, those uh, expectations will happen. There will be abuse, there will be um, challenges, there will be hiccups. They will recruit the wrong people, even criminals will be recruited. But over time, if they are serious, some of these things will be addressed. If you're a criminal, no matter where you are placed, it's just a matter of time, you will exhibit those tendencies. So those things will happen, but we can't um, ignore the bigger picture because of those uh, minimal challenges that will definitely arise. Uh, it's something we should still push through. But my bigger fear is not even what will happen after. It's how we'll get it passed and signed into law. Well, That's fingers the crossed. Challenge. We're just going to keep hoping that this time around we've had enough to uh, ensure that we get the desired change regarding the, the current policing that we have in Nigeria. And when, if and when we're able to you know, pass this bill, we'll have you come again so we can analyze the details of what this bill has. You know, thank you so much, Fred. It was always a Thank pleasure you very much for having me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.